Well, you know, the news these days, we've been covering uh, the various winners as they've been being announced as the Nobel Prize winners for each category. Well, Dr. Victor Ambrose, well, he uh, has been awarded the Nobel Prize in medicine, and uh, it is for his discovery of microRNA and its role in gene regulation, a breakthrough that has uh, reshaped molecular biology. That's what all the experts are raving about right now. So his journey from a curious student to this groundbreaking researcher is a testament to really the power of just perseverance and scientific just curiosity and inquiry. So Ambrose's work, Dr. Ambrose's work, has not only advanced our understanding apparently of genetics, but also maybe opened doors to new possibilities, maybe even in medical treatments. Let's explore this path to the Nobel Prize and the challenges I'm sure he's faced as well and the impact of his research. Joining us is the man himself, Dr. Victor Ambrose, the Silverman Chair in Natural Sciences and Professor of Molecular Medicine at the University of Massachusetts at Chan Medical School. Uh, 2024도벨 생리의학상 수상자 Victor Ambrose 박사를 지금 만나보겠습니다. So let's say hi to him first. Hi, welcome to our program. Hi, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Yes, yes. So first of all, a doctor. Ambrose, uh, and uh, I think I told you during our test call, but if I could, if we could get this information, maybe, you know, middle school level uh, of um, explanation, what exactly is microRNA? Can you explain to us? Well, microRNA is um, part of the machinery or information processing circuitry inside each of our cells, you know, um, Amazingly, you know, all the cells of our body contain exactly the same DNA. The information that gives us uh, the shape we are and the things we do. But every cell in our body um, is, in a way, different from every one, every other one. So, a, a brain cell is different from a skin cell. Is different from a muscle cell. And this is because the information in the DNA is being deployed. Differently in each of those cells to give them all the properties that we recognize, you know, in those cells and enable them to do what they do. And microRNAs are part of that information processing machinery that brings us information from the DNA to um, to realization. And the way that happens in each cell is that the DNA is copied into RNA, and some of the RNA molecules. Um, help build the cells, and other RNA molecules are, are including the microRNAs, uh, regulate um, when those other RNAs and therefore those other genes are on or off. Oh my goodness! I actually understood what you said, so thank you for explaining it, <laughs> kind of uh, dumbing it down for us, for lack of a better term. So, if you could share with our listeners what first inspired you to even get into this field, because from what I understand, um, you and also the co-recipient of the same award, were you not part of the same research group in the beginning? Yes, uh, Gary Rubkin and I were um, doing postdoctoral training after our PhD. Yes, we um, were doing research in the lab uh, of uh, Robert Horvitz at MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, mm -hmm. and we were working together and on a project that was aimed at understanding how an animal keeps track of time while it's developing. So that, you know, as the animal develops, the various parts of that animal are added at the right times and in the right sequence. So you end up with the right uh, final, you know, form. It's like a choreography of development. And we were using genetic approaches to do this. And so, you know, this was a, quite a while ago. It was in the 1980s. And so the tools that were available were, um, you know, much simpler than today but uh, also, you know, restrictive in what you could actually accomplish in a given amount of time. So when we set up our each of our own laboratories, yes, um, we uh, sort of informally uh, agreed to divide up the project in a way so that 
uh, his lab would concentrate on trying to track down and identify the DNA sequence of uh, one of the genes that we're interested in, and we would track down the other one. Now, the one that we um, set out to to, un to find and characterize was this, turned out to be a microRNA gene. Ah, and yes. then uh, Dr. Rufkin, uh, at the same time, was doing studies that complemented our studies in a way that there was a, a wonderful synergy between the findings such that we published our respective papers, you know, back to back, as they say, in mm -hmm. the in a same journal. Yes, yes. So, um, so I believe your team was in charge. Of, is it the Lin Four? And yes, <laughs> right. So, as I was reading up on this, what is the significance of this, though, uh, Doctor Ambrose? Because uh, now that we have a better understanding of the basics of um, what you discovered. How is this important for humankind, for humanity? And how does this parlay from, from what I understand, these, uh, I guess, like worms or let's say uh, other animals and parlay that over into human beings? Yeah, that's a, a really important thing for us to emphasize is that yes. the, these studies were conducted using a animal that is, um, has been adopted as sort of a stand-in for more complicated animals like ourselves. And this is because it's called Cenorhabditis elegans. It's a nematode. It normally lives in the soil outside, but it um, obligingly will grow happily on a Petri dish and just <laughs> consuming bacteria and allowing us to see the animals as they develop and, and also undergo you know, their life cycle. The life cycle is very fast. It's only two and a half days. Oh. So this allows investigators to perform experiments quite quickly and, um, you know, relatively quickly. The animal also is clear. So, um, you know, any, any uh, you know, sc uh, middle school student or high school student uh, with a microscope could look inside of C. elegans and see the cells uh. and watch them develop. And so that animal had has actually research on this animal c elegans has now yielded four nobel prizes and really has enabled i think the public to appreciate the importance of uh, you know the basic research in, yes. this, in this animal and so the, the and the important thing is that of course microRNAs are not just in this little worm but they're in people and all animals in fact have microRNAs and Many of us, including humans, let's say, have as many as thousand different genes <laughs> that make microRNAs, and each of those genes is contains a, makes a microRNA, and that microRNA has evolved to regulate dozens or sometimes hundreds of other genes. So these microRNAs really are integrated in a, in a highly connective information processing uh, system mm -hmm. inside our cells. So I think the significance for, uh, let's say, you know, medical uh, outcomes is one where, um, you know, an increased uh, understanding of the mechanisms and the complexity of those mechanisms inside cells enables us to yes. really approach solving the really difficult problems of, um, you know, prevention, disease prevention and treatment, um, you know, with a stronger knowledge base. And it, it, it really, the time, of course, between when new discoveries uh, lead to, you know, manifest um, public health advances yes. is often decades. And decades. this is because it takes a lot of people, a lot of time and a lot of resources to really engineer the kinds of reliable and safe medicines, you know, that could be perhaps immediately suggested. Mm discovery yet still take decades to realize indeed indeed so of course we uh, will look forward to hearing about how this leads to further developments in medicine in the near future um but right now if i could switch gears just a little bit dr ambrose and uh talk about the moment you found out that you uh be be became a nobel laureate um so while doing research for this particular interview um i saw this clip of you explaining apparently is it true that your son, the Nobel Committee contacted your son first and not you. And so how did you find out and what was the reaction like? Well, what happened was that I had 
you know, plugged my phone in downstairs and our bedroom is upstairs. So when um, the gentleman, the gentleman at um, from the Nobel Committee had tried to call me, uh, he didn't get through. And I can, and then, you know, later on, I could see on my phone there was Sweden, 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 <laughs> Sweden, multiple calls, you know. And so um, I guess some resourceful person thought of calling some other people named Ambrose in the, in the, in the area, or, <laughs> you know, in Massachusetts. So he called my son and, and then my son called my wife, Rosalind uh, Lee. Yes. Um, who, who had her phone, you know, up there in the bedroom. And so then he said, yes, I'm sure, you know, um, tell dad that if he gets a call from Sweden, answer it. <laughs> That's how oh I gosh. heard the news. That, that, that was the news for me right there. Yeah. Wow, wow. And so uh, after you heard this uh, from your son, and uh, I'm sure you did pick up the call from Sweden thereafter. thereafter. Right. Yes. Mm-hmm. What's it been like? Um, I saw the reaction from the UMass community. I saw that. It was really heartwarming. But what's been li- what has it been like? I mean, has your life changed? Because, you know, I know... You're an esteemed scientist and researcher, and uh, we would all like to think, oh, I'm sure he's very calm, and like, my life has not changed. But we really want to know, has it changed? Yeah, it has changed. You know, I mean, um, my wife and I, you know, Rosalind Lee is my wife, and she's she's my scientific partner in this (sighs) this investigation, you know, because she's the first author on that that paper. So, um, on the paper that you know, uh, triggered this yes. surprise event. And, you know, so we are not accustomed, you know, to being in the public eye. And mm-hmm. we find ourselves, you know, um, in circumstances like this, you know, so we're not like BTS who has, <laughs> you know, fully adapted to the public eye. So right. we think, that, you know, RM could give us some good advice about how to <laughs> handle all this. But, um, you know, so that's the main thing that's new is that we've, you know, just the arena in which we're operating is is um, out of context for us, mm. and, you know. But, you know, we're seeing it as an adventure and a learning experience. So here we are. Ah, and here we are. And um, to connect uh, even more with our listeners out there, I want to ask this next question to you, Dr. Um, Ambrose. You know, many of your students and colleagues, they describe you as always being so inquisitive, you know, always wanting to learn more. That's how they describe you, including one of your students, uh, Choi Song Ok, who really does speak highly of your mentorship. Um, how do you feel knowing that your work and even your guidance is making such a huge impact? Not just, oh, yes, of course, winning the Nobel Prize is amazing, but the fact that like on a daily basis that you're making this impact on other people. Yeah, I heard Choi Sung Wook's comments and uh, that those are really heartwarming. And, you know, he is, a, he's more than a former student. He's uh. a close and dear friend of Rosalind and I, and, you know, actually, we visited Korea, and he and his parents uh, hosted us, mm. um, and it was such a wonderful experience. Um, Choi Sung Wook also took me to uh, the bath, you know, the um, sa- the sauna, the scrub. yeah, the scrub place, and everything. And so, which was a very novel experience for me, and you know, um, and we enjoyed wonderful food and great hospitality, you know. So, yes, what I'm expre- appreciating, I think, more than ever. It from people's remarks is that it kind of really does matter what all of us say each day, minute yes. by minute, with the folks whom, with whom we work. Um, sometimes I'm surprised at a small remark of my own will make a big difference to somebody. And, um, you know, you don't really appreciate it in the moment, mm. uh, perhaps. So I guess I these kinds of wonderful, you know, sentiments that people are expressing you know, cause me to be try to be more mindful of 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 you know reaching out. Even smiling at somebody on the on the sidewalk can make a big difference for their day, even uh. if it's a stranger. You know, so these these things are very important, very yes. important. And the thing is, mini surprise for you, Doctor Ambrose. I know you can't see our YouTube chat room right now, but uh, Song Ok, Song Ok, Choi Song Ok, he's actually in our chat room, and he's I'm watching live, and he says I'm honored. <laughs> so he's oh actually 
yeah. <laughs> watching this yeah. live right now. Oh, I'm getting chills. Yeah. Um, yeah. He can't speak directly, obviously. He's <laughs> chatting with our other yeah. um, listeners. But um, just maybe a short message, a shout out. To him. What would you like to say? Oh, yeah. Sungwook uh, Candy is here and we're um, eager to visit. Yeah, we're eager to visit for, for, for our next visit to Korea uh, and hoping to see you and your parents then. Uh, so such Remember a that. nice uh, moment that we're capturing right here live on her, on her program. Yeah. But um, going back just a, a little a bit to kind of to touch people even more to, um, you know, to our audience and listeners, advice for aspiring scientists because you know today in our headline news we we're talking about the fact uh, uh with one of our segments that many of our young scientists they're actually leaving that field to pursue for example uh, a career in medicine to become like an md rather than stay and as a researcher which is kind of disheartening because we definitely want to see achievements in science so what would you say for any aspiring scientists out there okay you know i i think there's two sides to this i was struck by i was overhearing your story and i thought it was very interesting um one of the things that's important that i've learned is that sometimes people start on a path a career path and then they discover that maybe it's not for them. Mm. And I think it used to be that uh, the, the senior sort of administrators or mentors or professors yes. have not, very little tolerance for that. Uh. And I think in recent decades, um, we've become more mindful of the fact that it's important that young people make choices that are right for them. And so, in fact, you know, the graduate program at UMass Chan is is designed to accommodate people's diverse career interests and yes. to facilitate them being aware of the of their um, their power mm. to make choices and make changes. So, in a way, when I hear of someone, let's say, dropping out of of KAIST to go to medical school, well, maybe in one of the, some, that might be a case where it's a student making a wise choice. Mm. On the other hand, it could be somebody who is really dreaming of being a scientist and has become discouraged. Yes. Right? And so I feel like I can throw out advice, you know, to both those kind of people. If you feel that your, your path, the path you're on or your parents put you on, you know, or... <laughs> Or, you know, or what you fell into is not for you, then you have the power to really think about what would be right for you and mm. to make those choices to change your path. And if you are somebody who is um, dreams of being a scientist and is committed to do it, but has become dis discouraged for some reason, for, for example, maybe you've heard that the jobs in um, biotech are, are fewer than they were last year or the year before. Right. You know, by the time you finish your studies, it's probably going to rebound, mm. right? Because, you know, if it's biomedical studies, we know that's a growing enterprise. Yes. Um, and in, in engineering fields as well. It's mm. very hard to predict the future. So if your dream is to do, let's say, civil engineering, I'd say, um, you know, stick with it. Because success in, the fee in a field of uh, STEM is really powered by the passion that you feel for it and the dedication you have for it. So if you see in yourself that, yeah, I have the passion to do this, I have the energy, I have the, you know, the desire. Yes. I say go for it because that means you've got, you know, all your engines running, you mm. know, to be successful. And the world may be sh suggesting that things are tougher than, you know, than, than, um, than you'd like. But, um, you know, what choice do you have to, to, don't abandon your dream. I mean, really. Mm. My goodness. So inspiring, of course, not just on your whim, but um, the words that you have for all of us here who are non-scientists and scientists alike. Thank you so much for inspiring us today, Dr. Ambrose. We wish you and, of course, your wife the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> have a great day. You too.